I had been talking to some people on the uh, lighting gallery forums about my different fluorescent tubes and why some of them worked and some of them didn't and things like that, and they suggested that I test uh, uh, various tubes for continuity. And I asked uh, what impedance rating I should expect to see, and uh, nobody could give me a straight answer, at least not as of this point. And so I figured let's just try a bunch and see what we get. Some of these tubes are known good, some of them are not known good, so we'll have some, you know, some variation to play with. They're in no particular order, just the order I set them down here on the workbench. First up is this watt miser, which I've been told not to use in vintage fixtures. If vintage fixtures can't take lower wattage bulbs, you got to stick with 40 and is it 75 for the big ones, I think. So we'll see what this reads. Got the old trusty uh, fluke here. And uh, got alligator clips on it so that I can do this easier while I'm, uh, while I'm holding the camera. Let's just clip the two alligator clips together just to make sure that we got a good read here. Okay, that's reading. There must be a little corrosion on one of them because it's reading. Oh, it looks like it's going to drop all the way down. It should be 0, 0.00, but uh, as the leads get old on both the meter and the clips, sometimes you don't get exactly 0. If I wait long enough, it will go down to 0, as you can see. Okay, I only have so much patience. See, you can see it's going to keep going, it'll get to zero. So here's the watt miser, let's clip the leads on there. Well that's interesting, it can't seem to make up its mind about what it wants to be. But it's in the hundreds, not the tens or the single digits or the thousands. I'm going to leave it there for a little bit and just see. No, because it's going up. So I don't think it's going to go down to anything. So that's uh, right around, let's just say 500 because it, it, it went up to like 6 and down to like 4. And, and this end that seems more like the measurement than I would have expected. 13. And it's dropping. Just for curiosity, no, I'm not going to bother with that. I was going to say, let's try it without the leads. I'll do that at the end. I'm going to go back down to this end again and see if... Uh, so I had the phone plugged into the charger, and uh, it just came unplugged, so forget it. I'll charge it after the video's done. We're going to try this end one more time just to see if we still get that high of a reading. Because if so, this could be a defective bulb. No, now we get... So I guess it just wasn't making good continuity before. These pins can be corroded, too. So we're getting... In the single digits of OMs on that end. Let's try this end one more time. Same as the other one. Okay. I mean, same as the other time is what I meant. So let's put the watt miser down here. Let's see what comes up next in our bulbs. It is one of the ace ones that will not work in a preheat fixture. I know that because I put this in the pile. The pile that I got these from is my pile of ones I won't be using. There's some that don't work in preheat. <clears throat> there's some that are odd colors like daylight. And then there's uh, some watt misers and things. Okay. Well, it appears this might be a bad bulb because I'm getting open on that end. So, let's try the other end. And if it is open on one end, then I see no particular reason to keep it. I've been told that bulbs that are open on one end will still light in some fixtures, but that just seems silly to me. Yep, 
Same as the watt miser on the other one, like four or five. Let's try the uh, other end one last time, just to make sure we didn't have a not strong connection. That pin does look awfully corroded. So here's what I'm going to do. Is that one, one pin there looks pretty bad. I'm going to set this one aside. I'm going to go to my magic elixir spot and get some more magic elixir. And we'll put a little bit on there. Let it eat through the corrosion and see if it tests any differently. We'll come back to it at the end. So magic elixir. Okay. Put that one here. Okay, next up. What is this one? Delta lighting. This is one that had a rattly sound, so I assumed it was bad. I didn't try it. Just because I still don't know. Oh, you can kind of see into it. I don't know if, if there's circumstances under which a bad bulb can damage a fixture. And I don't want to take that risk with vintage stuff. Okay, that end tests good. Right around 4 ohms. So it looks like what we should be expecting is right around 4 or 5 ohms. And I'm going to leave the ohm meter on one of these uh, for a while and see what it gets to. Because, again, the lead's being corroded and the terminal's being corroded. Okay, well, this one appears to test good even though it rattles. That one's, unless that goes all the way down to a dead short, which would be bad for a fixture. Let's see if I short these together. It's hard to do this and hold the camera. If I short them together, I get about the same reading. Okay, well, I don't want to assume that that's good. I got another Delta one. This was... I'll put this over here. Here's another Ace that did not work in the preheat. That one seems good. I'm having trouble with that hand. I'm going to switch hands. Okay, yeah, so it's open on one end. So that's the problem with these ACE ones that I've tested, is that they're open on one end. This is a bulb that worked perfectly, it's just an odd color. True spectrum is what it says. So I'm guessing that's like a daylight or something like that. Whatever it was, it was ugly. It was like a pale, eerie blue, like a Twilight Zone blue. We, I know it's good, so we're going to let the meter just sit and see how low it goes. While I'm doing that, just in case you didn't see it, completed project there, the half pipe and the furnace and everything, and I'm very pleased. If anything, it's too much light. I wish I could put dimmer bulbs in it. Wish I could do wattmizers or something, because uh, two bulbs would be fine for over there. But um, it's the opposite problem of before when it was too dim over there. At least I get to use my cool vintage fixture. Still moving. These are very close to a dead short. Somebody was telling me it should measure shorted. And uh, <clears throat> I didn't think it should measure zero ohms. But these are very close to zero ohms. What's this last bulb? Sylvania Cool White Deluxe, which is another odd color. It's not a horrible color, but... Okay, so it looks like 2.5 is about where we're going to land on that. Doesn't seem to be dropping below 2 at least. 
I guess this is an indication that it's time for me to buy new meter leads and new alligator clips. I uh, typically buy new meter leads every couple years, and it's been a while. I've been getting them at Radio Shack, so I guess I should do that before Radio Shack is gone. Okay. That's clearly good. Here's the last one that we know to be good. So we're testing this just to see what the values are. It's interesting that the watt misers and the... Uh, th well, put it this way, that the 34 watt and the 40 watt ones seem to be about the same impedance. You would expect that the uh, lower wattage ones would be higher impedance. Okay. Well, it looks, yeah, it looks like that's what we can come to expect from this is around 2 ohms. Nope, it's going to drop below 2 ohms. Okay. Well, I might mess with this some more, and if I come across anything revelatory, I will make another video. Thanks for watching.